for whatever reason, um, the IBR kit only came with two of these uh, M6 bolts that uh, attached the, this uh, auto body adapter onto the, the BRZ manifold. So yeah, for some reason it only gave me two when obviously I need four. So I'm gonna go run down to the hardware store, see if I can find another M6 bolt like this, and or two of them at least. I didn't record it, but this is probably the sixth or seventh time I'm having to go to the hardware store, or pretty much any store, just to find extra parts, like whether it was hoses or brass fittings or um, what's it called? Hose clamps, hose caps, filters, hardware, but yeah, uh, so. If you guys are doing a big install like this, just be prepared to have a few runs down to the, the store to get more parts. But yeah, let's go grab the keys, hop in the daily, and get that M6 bolt. Alright guys, just put up to the hardware store. Some cool cars out here though. Another old school band. Ah, it's pretty clean though. Just a little update. They didn't have the M6 by 25 flange bolts, so I might end up using the hex screws or the hex bolts, and then just using a washer because they are the same size. This just doesn't have the, the flange on the top. Just got back home. Uh, I ended up just grabbing the four um, M6 uh, bolts. They're not the ones, like I said, with the, the flanges on top. But I mean, hopefully, you know, they do the same job and they work. Not exactly sure if this is gonna work, but I ended up using some rubber washers that I had uh, to try put in between the bolt and the adapter plate, just to see if, you know, it prevents it from leaking air. Thousands of tears later. So it's the next day. Uh, this is the basically the finished product for the BRZ manifold. Uh, it looks really good, um, but you know it was honestly a bitch. Not gonna lie. Like the main troubles that I was having was getting these bolts right here to line up properly. What I ended up doing was I shaved down uh, this inner wall over here of the manifold, and I also just like pushed this valve. Uh, for the high pressure fuel pump just as much as I could out of the way so it is actually touching right there if you guys can see so there is some contact but I also shaved down that uh, that little corner of there so it wouldn't like poke through the the, um, the fuel line so hopefully hopefully everything's good uh, it looks great like I said before um, can't wait to get the front mount and all the piping routed to, to it but first off we're gonna do the drop the turbo and do the uh, exhaust manifold and the whole killer b external wastegate setup so we'll do the front mount last and then hopefully we can once we have the turbo and everything mounted back up 
it'll be the front mount and then burp the coolant do the oil change and shoot we should be good but just another something to be cautious about when installing this whole kit just make sure that especially with these bolts up here and especially this one right here that you don't over tighten it i actually over tightened this one that night i was installing it this, which is why i'm you know fast forward to today which is i'm telling you guys that i'm finally finished installing this i over tightened that one i ended up stripping it and it was not fun to get it out. I can tell you that I actually had to, if my camera can focus, so I had to actually Dremel it out with, or I'd pretty much just Dremel a line and then use like a flathead to try, you know, unscrew it out. And it, it ended up working, but you know, it took like about 30 minutes and that was just a really fat waste of time. So yeah, just be careful with that. All the, the bolts up here by the throttle body. Other than that, everything else is pretty much all buttoned up. Got some, had to get some extra hose, uh, ran to AutoZone to pick up some more. This is 3 8 I believe. Um, it just had to go attached to this fitting right here that goes to your vacuum pump. I also had to get another bolt, as you saw from before. I shipped the other one. Some fittings, like the, these brass ones that you see, and this one that connect to the AOS. And I would say hose clamps, these are probably one of the biggest things that I like needed because I probably used, I will say a good four to five to six of these already. The next day. All right guys, so uh, this is uh, year four of working on the build. Um, today we're gonna work on getting the headers and the uh, turbo uh, disconnected from the car. I'm assuming is we're gonna have to drain some lines, drain some oil and coolant lines. So we're gonna do that. The uh, the, the turbo inlet is already taken off, the charge pipe's taken off, everything's pretty much ready besides the side exit. I wanted to see if I could drop the turbo and the manifold with the side exit on, but honestly, I don't think I should even try. So I might end up just taking that off. But yeah, we're gonna try uh, clamp off some of these hoses to prevent as much fluid from getting on the floor as I can. And then from there, we'll start pulling off the lines. And then I guess we'll just start doing the side exit and the bolts. All right, guys. So right now, just uh, under the oil feed line right there, uh, clamped off the coolant hose. And this is the oil feed line or whatever it's called to, to this bottom thing. I forget what it's called. But yep, just draining out the oil. I'm going to start by going to the PCV ones up here, or I'm not sure exactly which ones these are called, but this is the one with the sump restrictor in it. So, gotta get that off, and yeah, just make sure to clamp all these off so you don't have coolant flowing out and oil flowing out everywhere. All right, thanks, Rod Roy. Pretty much what I've been doing, uh, I disconnected um, every single line that we had to disconnect from underneath the car, all over here, and then all up here. And I also shot some PB Blaster uh, on all the bolts, the J-Pipe bolts, and also the exhaust manifold bolts, just in case, you know. Uh, I mean, any easier it is, the better, you know what I'm saying? So. Um, the car only has 12,000 miles on it, so I'm hoping that uh, it won't be too difficult. And also, I've taken off this J-pipe um, probably like a good three or four times. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to pull off the J-pipe, hopefully pull off the exhaust manifold, and everything goes smoothly. And then from there, yeah, we just got to work on getting the turbo onto the canopy headers, putting the springs in the wastegates, and then mounting it back up. I'm probably not going to record much of this uh, dropping of the turbo in the manifold because as you can see it's a quite a bit of a mess down here and I'm not trying to touch my camera over and over again you know while I have dirty ass hands so yeah guys I'll see you in a bit we'll see how things go So we got the 202 sensors off the side exit and then we got the side exit off as you guys can see and yeah the next thing we gotta do is start working at these uh, manifold 
bolts. There's three of them, three on each side. Sorry, I meant six. Six of them, three on each side. I will be reusing these bolts. Uh, I think these are like the upgraded ones, so they're they're pretty strong. And sorry if my camera's all over the place. Honestly, I'm not looking at the camera. I'm kind of like looking in front of me when I'm recording. I gotta start like looking at the actual screen, but. Yeah, uh, gonna reuse these. I have all brand new gaskets, new gaskets right there. So, J pipe gasket, the all the uh, header manifold gaskets are all gonna be brand new. So, yep, this is a side exit, and yeah, it's actually really easy. Uh, the PB blaster. I'm telling you guys, if you guys are too lazy to go pick up some PB blaster or some even some WD-40 or like some creeping oil or whatever it's called, man. I get some coolant and shit on me, but it's all right. Y'all see that? There's one. There's two. And for the third one. There's three. So as you guys can see, that was honestly cake. And if you guys aren't using PB Blaster for any loosening or you know breaking of bolts I'm telling you this will make your life a whole lot less difficult because I think now all we gotta do is take off those bolts and I mean we just gotta finagle this manifold and turbo off all right guys so uh, about five minutes later the headers and the turbo is now dropped from the car all I did was kind of use the, the jack as like to help me uh, lift up most of the weight as I just like slowly let it go down and honestly it came out really smooth uh, Like I had no issues at all whatsoever about getting this this headers off I'm not sure if it's just because it's almost brand new. We finally got the turbo off All we gotta do now is get the heat shields off Separate the turbo from the stock headers and put it on to the killer B ones and then do all the wastegate stuff But we're gonna have to clean up a little bit of this mess it's just a little tip from me um, if you're installing like a whole bunch of parts at one time and you're not trying to like lose you know which bolts go to where or which hoses go to where just like tape them off you know I used to have all tape on all of these ones as you can see I still have like some of the blue stuff sticking on to I used to have tape and I just used to write a sharpie of what line this was or what line goes to where and like for my nuts and my bolts all I do is put them in plastic bags like this and I just label them so over here I have a whole bunch of labeled stuff and yeah that's how you just stay organized and after you install one part make sure you clean up everything around try to get the area that you're working in um, just cleaned up just so that you don't you know have to deal with the whole mess of the first install when you're moving on to the next one we got the header heat shield off which is over there we're not gonna be reusing that so we don't gotta worry about that and we also got the the turbo he, uh, he shield off as well It's three bolts the header one is five and you're gonna be reusing this um, the turbo heat shield so just make sure you don't lose the bolts for that here's a direct comparison of the stock headers and the killer B ones so this is where we're gonna mount the uh, external wastegates to I still have to put the springs together and compress them so I'm gonna be focusing on that first and also uh, figuring out this uh, block off rod after a quick call to my buddy Alex uh, shout out to Alex you know who you are and I know a lot of the stance people stance community know who Alex Havisto is so uh, yeah, uh, quick call to him. I figured out what to do. What I did pretty much was disconnect the internal wastegate. Uh, this rod was sticking through here and then connecting to this. And then what this does is it keeps this flat, um, what's it called, closed. I don't know if you can see that, but pretty much uh, what I'm going to be trying to do or uh, trying to achieve is this rod is going to keep tension on this flap and that flap is going to hold this thing closed and that will be able uh, to allow me to use the external wastegates. I'm going to unscrew it out a little bit. So it's about four o'clock right now. Uh, I've been working for maybe about three, three and a half hours on this whole thing from start to finish, but it hasn't been too long, but I'm starving. So I'm gonna go get some food. Probably gonna get back to uh, setting the gates to 10 PSI and then mounting it onto the killer bee headers and then putting it onto there. So hopefully we'll finish the whole headers install by tonight. If not tonight, then tomorrow morning. And then from there, we'll be able to start the front mount. Alright guys, so pretty much, uh, they didn't record uh, all of last night, 
I got the waste gates all set up, the springs compressed and onto the headers, uh, use the flanges, use all the, the fittings and then the block off ports. Just make sure to use Loctite if you're doing this job. Um, you use the bigger V clamps, uh, V bands that come with it. And yeah, so we got the headers pretty much set. We got the uh, block off rod for the internal wastegate on the turbo pretty much done. Or I mean, yeah, done already. And we also got the uh, front mount intercooler mounted up. Don't have the piping connected to it, obviously, but you know, just a little rough draft of what's to come. And yeah, it's looking pretty good. As of right now, I gotta go to school. Uh, I have an hour, 15 minute class, and then I'm back over here, back at home so, uh, to work on the rest of this project. But I gotta go to the hardware store, gotta grab some bolts for, uh, or the, the nuts for the turbo to mount onto the headers. Uh, the nuts that I took off, honestly, they're not in the best shape or condition. Uh, some of them are like, they have like divots inside of them because the teeth on the socket, you know damages it but so we're gonna go get some new hardware for the turbo to header uh nuts and we're also gonna get some hoses uh, get some fittings and i believe we're gonna get something else i have it all in my notes on my phone so but yeah we're just gonna be making a quick uh hardware store run after school and from there yeah should have everything to install all of these parts and finally finish the project just got home from school, uh, also went to the hardware store before I came home. Got the nuts that we needed. Got the nuts, uh, got some 3M tape for my spats and stuff. I'm gonna be remounting my diffuser, so I'm gonna have to pull off the spats and uh, restick the tape on it and all the bolts and all that stuff. Uh, also got a Dremel fitting for the front bumper so I can cut out the front bumper a little bit better, a little cleaner. But yeah, uh, as of right now, I'm just gonna try to mount the turbo onto the headers, and then from there, mount it onto the car. All right guys, sorry the music's playing, but uh, I'm gonna work on getting the headers back onto the car. I torqued down um, to spec all the, the, the four nuts that connect the turbocharger to the, the headers, and now we're gonna go try and attach the headers to the block of the car. Okay, so it's about 30, maybe 45 minutes later from when I started trying to put the headers on. Uh, so far, I got the headers onto the block. It was honestly really hard. Uh, the jack in the middle didn't really help, so I actually had to just get under the headers and just physically just bench press it up. And once I bench press it up, I kind of just used my arm to hold it in place. And once I had the, uh, the bolts through the, uh, the manifold, and then once I had the bolts in, I just kind of held it as strong as I could and just put one bolt here, put one bolt on the other side. And from there, I could kind of just let it go and it kind of just dropped, but the bolts are still holding it, you know what I mean? So that's how I got it in. Uh, I still got to tighten all the bolts. And yeah, so right now it looks pretty good. I have the gaskets in there. The gaskets were honestly not a great fit. You kind of you have to like force it on, I guess compared to these stock ones, it's a lot thicker and the holes are maybe a little bit off. All right guys, so we got the headers all torqued down to spec. Got the turbo onto the headers, bolt, uh, the four turbo bolts and the six header bolts, all the same torque spec like I said before. Do the header ones twice. Now I'm gonna uh, redo all the plumbing and route everything back to how it should be. And then I'll get the turbo inlet and intake on and then the front mount and all the piping. I might do the front mount piping uh, a little bit before I do the intake uh, and the turbo inlet. But we'll see how that goes. A few inches later. Alright, so I've been working a little bit on the car for the last maybe hour to two hours. Uh, the headers is all torqued down like I said. Uh, we got the turbo inlet, the Grim Speed aluminum inlet on there. Uh, as Along with the uh, Grim Speed uh, boost controller. Got most of the plumbing uh, plumbed and all fitted back to where it should be. Uh, gotta tighten a few things down. I do have to run to the parts store for the 10th or 20th time to get a, see if I can find a hose cap for this um, fitting right over here. Uh, this is for the inlet. This used to go to my AOS, but now since I'm running the competition one, I won't be using this, so just gotta cap it off. But other than that, yeah, we should be pretty much good. I also have to get a brass fitting for my uh, bypass um holes to the turbo inlet so gotta get that as well but other than that shoot 
we're almost done. I honestly can't believe it, guys. It's, it's been a, almost a one and a half to two week process. I uh, haven't been working on it every single day, but you know, been coming back here and there and been doing, you know, a few hours every single day. And yeah, it's finally gotten to this point. One eternity later. All right, guys, so I'm here with my buddy, Anthony. Uh, we pretty much got everything routed. Honestly, the couplers were a bitch, so I ain't really wanna like deal with trying to record every single angle while we're doing all the couplers and stuff, but everything is routed, everything is plumbed. We got the external wastegates all plumbed up to the boost controller, we got the intake on the turbo inlet, everything hooked up on the turbo inlet, we got the fan back in. Yeah, looks pretty good, but uh, all we gotta do left is the oil change and the coolant burp, and uh, we should be ready. Today is the day. Uh, it's the next day from the last clip you guys saw. Pretty much, we have everything buttoned up. I mean, the only thing I have to change, I actually ended up getting the bottom part of the housing for the tile blow-off valve to, so this is the Q um, bottom part of the, the blow-off valve. The only difference is the bottom part, or the, the, yeah, the bottom portion. So basically, it gets rid of this, uh, this port, I guess, this port is what goes to your um, turbo inlet and that's what recirculates back. But since I can't find the right holes and the ETS holes didn't work with this, I'm gonna just switch to the Q and hopefully when my tune comes, you know, it, uh, he'll be able to tune and adjust for all of that, all the changes. But yeah, my car might run rich, especially when I let off the throttle. So definitely not gonna drive it very often, but um, my tune is in a week or two, so and also I'm leaving on a trip so I probably won't be driving this really at all unless it's to like get the TEs fitted because I'm still currently um, have it all set up for the VI, uh, the VXSs. But yeah guys, I put uh, all my carbon pieces back on. I had to trim a little bit because obviously this is here now so I had to do a little modification but other than that, everything should be pretty buttoned up. We have the, um, the funnel ready to burp our coolant but first off we have to upload this map face map onto our car so here goes nothing i made sure to um charge the car battery as well we are uploading the tune onto the car uh haven't been in this car for over a month so it, yeah it feels good to finally be sitting down if you're wondering what that noise is it's the compressors in the back for my um airlift but yeah, oh gosh, guys. Man, it feels good to be back in here. All right. Access port. All right, so Tune is uploaded, hopefully. I mean, I think I did that right. Haven't uploaded a Tune in a, in a while. I'm gonna fill up the coolant, uh, get it to like maybe about here, and then yeah, we can burp the coolant. Definitely louder. I check for leaks. I'm trying to see if there's anything disconnected right now. Everything seems to be pretty good. All right, guys. My camera's gonna die because I didn't end up charging it uh, from yesterday. But I've been slowly seeing some bubbles come up, especially when I, you know, you just gotta slightly tap the throttle and more bubbles will come up as well. If, you know, you don't see anything going on. But yeah, guys, I'm just gonna let the car get up to temp, finish a coolant burp, and then. Yeah, should be alright. I'm gonna probably like cut up the diffuser so it can fit the front mount and then also take off my rear diffuser. Or sorry, cut up my front bumper and then take off my rear diffuser. What's going on guys? So, like always, you know, I've been working on the car. Uh, I got the front bumper cut out. As you can see right there, my 
the remnants of the plastic bumper. Uh, I also got the diffuser mount or dismounted. Um, it's or how I have it set up. It's connected to the the spats, so uh, I had to take off the spats and the diffuser all one time to get the diffuser off. But yeah, I'm gonna probably do the tune and and all that without the diffuser because honestly, the <laughs> it's really heavy and it flaps in the wind a little bit. I gotta kind of make it. I gotta reinforce it a little bit to make it a little bit more uh, sturdy and stronger. So I don't gotta worry about it. But yeah, uh, I'm just gonna rock it without the diffuser. I think it'll be a little bit better too. Not. Won't look as good because it'll look like the rear is kind of missing something. But as of now, uh, the car starts. The coolant is burped. Everything should be pretty much set for the car. I'm going to take off. Uh, I have these um, big ass spacers on here because I was fitting the TEs, which I will be doing in the future. I'll probably be doing it for another video. But as of now, this is pretty much just like the install video and pretty much getting the car from on the jacks to back on the ground. Honestly, I, I have no clue what day or what part this is. Uh, I finally got the wheels back on, uh, checked all the tire pressure, filled it up with air. But yeah, she's pretty much ready to be put back on the ground and maybe we'll take her out for a little test drive. See how she feels since we got a new clutch line, we got new braces and the pitch stop and all that. But yeah, the only thing that really bugs me is this 3M. So going to have to find a rubber wheel for that. There's a little bit of 3M stuck on the other side as well, but yeah. Gosh, I, I really miss this car. Honestly, like the, the VXSs fit so well with this car. Like, I know a lot of people think, yeah, the camber's too much and all that, but honestly, I, I love it. Like, just the way it sits, everything. All right guys, so I ran into a little problem. I definitely am gonna have to trim some of this area if you guys can see it. Uh, yeah, it interferes with the, the piping for the front mount. Not too sure if this side does. I feel like it does somewhere over here. So definitely gonna have to trim the bumper a little bit more. But as of now, honestly, I'm just gonna take it out <laughs> as is just to see how it feels. And I kind of want to see how that clutch line and like, the braces feel. Cause even when I just started up the car, just to burp the coolant, like I could already tell there was a lot more vibration than what it was before. And I'm sure that's because of the pitch stop and the pitch stop brace. So yeah, we're going to take out the car. Sadly, we can't put my front bumper on cause I'm going to have to trim it. But yeah, we'll see. test drive she's warming up right now but yeah just gonna see how she feels she's all warmed up about to go take her out for a spin yeah definitely a lot of more vibrations than how it was before i definitely think that's due to uh the pitch stop now having that uh solid bushing sorry about the the seat belt chime guys i'll make sure to turn that off the next time i turn on the car because I, I have to do it when the car is off but as of now she drives pretty smooth like i just did first to second to third up to this light and yeah it, it was smooth i heard the blow off valve and honestly the clutch is a lot different from um the stock one i guess because the stock one had a lot of i think it had two delay valves on it but other than that yeah my throttle also feels different it also could just be because of tune and stuff but um yeah the throttle it feels like i have to press it more i guess to uh, like actually get it going Yeah, I'll try to give you guys a little POV. It's kind of hard. Quick step out, can open my door. 
some of y'all can hate on this camera bro like it just looks so good I know there's a lot of haters on the stance and everything and this is supposed to be a rally car and all that but like, let's be realistic guys I live in Hawaii there's no track there's no circuit <laughs> there's really nothing so for us out here in Hawaii it's really just either show and go or just show or go you know what I mean and I kind of just want to do both so oh yeah Alright guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I honestly do not know if I'm like using this, all these clips or whatever. It's probably gonna be it for this video guys. I appreciate you guys tuning in, you know, helping me along with the install. But yeah, right now it's time to go home. <laughs>